I have the baby data set open and I'm just going to look at some graphs and some descriptive stats for the birth weight of the babies. In the data view that's this column here for birth weight or baby weight and then we've got the the two different codes for smoking so we've got the the one with the four categories in this column here smoke and then the one where it's been recategorized into never smoking or ever smoking we've got that over here in the variable view that looks like the birth weight is here and we can see that that's a scale variable which means it's continuous the smoking variable is categorical and it's nominal so it's quite important usually to just check these are okay often if you've got the wrong measure in here SPSS will not let you do what you think you want to do because you've got the wrong types of variables for it so it's worth checking and if you click into the values you can see what our four categories mean because obviously categories 0, 1, 2 and 3 don't mean a whole lot unless you know what they are so we've got never smoked, now smokes, smoked until pregnancy and former smoker. Then that has also been recategorized into the ever smoked. And that's just whether the baby's never sm the mother's never smoked or whether they have ever smoked. And they sound the same, so that's not very helpful. Never and ever. Okay. So to graph these variables, if we go into the graphs and then chart builder, um, I might be interested in a box plot first, just take everything out. If you want to do a plot, uh, just click on the one you want and uh, drag it in. The y-axis is the continuous variable or the scale variable that we're interested in and that's the birth weight, so you just click on it and drag it into the box. The x-axis is the categories. And in this case, to start off with, we're just looking at the two categories of ever smoked, ever smoked and never smoked. Okay. It's just popped up on my other screen. Now, so for a box plot, what it does, it's you have to conceptually get all the babies from one category, say the never smoked, lie them in a line from the lightest to the heaviest, divide them in half, so you've got the 50% of the lightest babies on this half and then 50% of the heaviest babies in this, this half and then divide them in half again for your quartile. Sorry, here, what am I pointing? So it's dividing the data into quarters with the box plot. So the lowest 25%, next 25%. So this is the middle value, the median, and then and so on. Now the anything in a circle with a circle is an outlier so that means that the software has done a little calculation and said look based on the rest of the data you're quite a long way away and I'm going to call you an outlier um, and we'll see that when we have a look at the histogram where it pops up. So the never smoked babies look a little bit more squished together um, but there's more outliers. Uh, very difficult to tell here if there's any significant difference between the average weight we can just see that for all the babies there's a lot of overlap so I'm also going to have a look because we're interested in um, we're interested in the difference of the means but before we look at that we're also interested in to see if it's approximately normally distributed if there's any skewness or kurtosis or anything else interesting happening in the data set so skewness is if it looks like it's been pulled out in one direction, sort of being pulled upwards or downwards. And then um, kurtosis is if it's been pulled up or down, but we'll have a little look in the histograms to explain that. So in the histogram, I'll just go back, sorry, show you where I got that from. You can do a histogram in the chart builder. It's difficult to get the plot that I want this way. I actually don't know how to do it. Um, there's a couple of other you can get a stacked histogram and you can get what we call a population pyramid and this is usually for age structures of populations. I mean there's no reason you can't do your baby weights this way with them back to back but I just want them on top of each other. So I'm just going to cancel out of that and go into the legacy dialogues. Down the bottom there's the histogram. You can see I've already put them in here. So I've got the birth weight. Um, as the variable that I'm plotting. The rows are the categories that I want it split by and that's the ever smoked and then the, I've also ticked the display normal curve and so it's going to draw a little curve over the top which would be what it would look like if it was normal. So 
what you can see here is that we actually have something that looks pretty normal. Uh, where it goes off from being normal, we've got a little bit too much stuff happening up the top here. And then these bumps here outside of what we call the tails of the distribution, that's where we're seeing the outliers. Now kurtosis is when something looks like it's been pulled up so it's peaking too high or if someone has put their hand on it and squished it down and it actually it looks normal shaped but it's just way too flat. Um, and then skewness is if it's been pulled out by one of the tails left or right. The other plot that is interesting is the scatter plot. Um, well, we, it's in the scatter dot, we just want a dot plot though, simple dot. And this looks very similar to the histogram, but if you had less data, sometimes you want to see where all the actual data points lie, and that's where you might want a dot plot, but it won't draw you the normal curve. So the birth weight and the ever smoked, the same as before. And this time we get a little dot for each, representing each baby. So sometimes this is helpful if you want to see exactly where each um, data point lies. To get the descriptives for this data we go into analyze descriptives and explore. We've got the birth weight in the dependent list so the dependent variable is the variable that we think depends on something else and in this case we think the birth weight is going to depend on the smoking status of the mother um, and in this case we this is categorical and we've got two levels and a categorical variable is called uh, a factor in this type of plot. Um, I can have a quick look at these. Uh, you'd think I could remember what's in all of these options but I can't. That's probably come on ticked for you by default. Just turn it off because you don't really need the stem and leaf. That'll do options. That's fine. Okay. So we get the box plot again, you can see down the bottom, but we also get the descriptives. Now don't cut and paste this table into any report because it's just far too ugly. Either reformat it to make it look pretty or um, just pull out the data that you need. Is The statistics that you need is probably a better idea. Now at the top we've got what's called the case processing summary. That's just where SPSS has gone through and just checked what our data looks like. So it says we've got 533 babies in the never smoked category and valid means that there's um, no missing data for the, the thing that we're looking at, which is birth weight. It's possible that there's missing data in other columns, like perhaps we don't know if the father smoked or something. So there could be missing data somewhere, but there's not in this particular column. And then we've got 678 babies in the ever smoked category. Uh, we have the mean, 122 versus 116. So we can see that there is a bit of a difference there. And the question is, is that statistically significant? In terms of describing the distributions, we might be interested in the skewness and kurtosis. If they're close to zero, then there is no skewness, it hasn't been pulled in one direction or the other. And if the kurtosis is close to zero, then it hasn't sort of been pulled up or pushed down. And so for the ever smoked babies, you can see that they're not really skewed or kurtotic. Um, with the, ever, the never smoked babies, sorry, never smoked the mums who never smoked. The kurtosis is one, which is not really very huge. It just looks like it's been squished in a little bit. So you can see that on the box plot. Kind of looks like it's been pushed up a little bit, um, squished in a little bit in the middle. So it's coming up over the top of the normal curve here. I wouldn't worry about that. Maybe only if it gets over two or three would you worry about that, I think. But you can Google that. The very last plot I'll have a look at is the plot of these means and the confidence intervals. So the box plot is showing us all the data. This is all the babies together and we can see that there's a lot of overlap. If we're interested in, on average is there a difference between the two groups, we would actually want to plot the averages. We don't have the mean on the box plot, that's the median in the middle there. And we certainly don't have the confidence interval on the box plot. So to get a plot with the mean and the confidence interval, we'll go back into graphs, chart builder, we get a bar chart, but it's not uh, what you would think of as a bar chart, certainly not one of these. It's a simple error bar chart, and an error bar is completely different from one of these bar charts. So it's a little bit confusing that they're in the same spot. Drag that in. 
you can see that it's changed here. Instead of saying birth weight, it's saying mean. So that means it's just going to plot the mean, and that's the dot in the middle. These bar the bars either side are not about the whole data set. They're just about the confidence interval for the mean. Click OK. Double click on the graph because I'm going to change something. I want to change this scale and just zoom in a bit so I can see these a little bit more clearly. I'm going to double click right on that 100, but if you double click on any of the y-axis numbers, then you'll they'll get highlighted in yellow and then you can go into scale. Tick that off and I'm just going to put 110 in there. It doesn't matter too much what you do it, just to zoom in a little bit. Occasionally this is what people do to make their results look a little bit more important than they are, is that they zoom right in on the difference and that would be mm, unethical in reporting your data that way. That's not what I'm trying to do, I'm actually just trying to see it in this case. Um, and now that I've zoomed in, and I'm only going from 110 to 125, we can see that there is a difference between the never smoked and the ever smoked on average. So there's a difference in the means, which is what we will test with the t-test. If the confidence intervals do not overlap, you'll get a significant difference at the 95% level because we're doing a 95% confidence interval. If they overlap a little bit, you might get a significant difference. You really need to run the test. It's a little bit hard to judge by eye. If they completely overlap, you will not get a significant difference on the t-test. So I find it quite helpful to do these error bar charts, um, these confidence interval plots. I don't like calling them bar graphs, they're not bar graphs really, just the error bars. Um, because then you can see visually if there's a difference in the means. And it makes it clear that you are only testing the means, the averages, you're not testing all the babies because we know that there's a lot of overlap with all the babies. So I'll close that off.